Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young, who he's crouching for a reason right now. Looks like he's in a you know at a, a big table in a kid's chair. He's not. He's normal sized everything, but he's hunching because uh, he's got a surprise reveal for us that he didn't want to give away yet. And then Drew Galloway down there as well. Today we are going to talk about quarterbacks. Kind of continue previewing what's going on for K-State. And uh, since quarterback's really a position where you hope to only see one guy, this will pretty much be about Avery Johnson, so I'm sure everybody will be very, very excited about that. I have a handful of questions uh, that I will deliver to these two guys, and everybody will kind of share what they think. Uh, Some of them are based on kind of historical benchmarks that have been met by K-State quarterbacks, certain things that we maybe haven't seen, or you know, when is this going to change? A lot of different things, uh, various questions and answers that will be given here today. But before we do that, the Wildcats are headed to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats2ireland.com. So one more time, since I don't have it on the screen today for everybody, it'll be back there tomorrow. Cats, the number two, Ireland.com, if you want to uh, get on it and really make your your travel over there carefree. As long as you are a punctual human being and you can get to the places that they tell you to be at, this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, If you're not a punctual person, you have a year to get ready to become one. So start practicing, start telling your family, yeah, we are leaving, we're leaving Hutchinson at 7 a.m. for this 11 a.m. kickoff. You better get your ass out the door and ready to go at that time. And then what do you know? The dad and three kids are sitting in the car waiting and waiting and waiting on one remaining person inside the house. Is it the dog? Is it another sibling? Is it the mom? The correct answer would be the mom. It is the mom. So everybody get your mom ready to be punctual and on time so you can travel with cats2ireland.com next year. Sorry to the to the female listeners and, and viewers out there that are punctual, and this does not apply to you. Uh, this is mainly a shot at my mother and grandmother. So just, you know, <laughs> handing down the, the challenge to not them. Not your wife? She's pretty good about that. She She's better about it. Her issue is, and I'm, she doesn't have issues. She's great. She's a great lady. But, <laughs> her <laughs> issue is. but her issue is, is that it takes her two hours to get ready or whatever, you know, all this time. And so she's still in the middle of like finishing getting ready and we'll have like 10 minutes before we need to leave. And she'll come out she'll start yelling at me for not having gotten ready. And I'm like, it takes me three minutes to put my shoes on and do whatever else I need to do. I will be ready. Don't worry about me. Worry about everybody else. It's going to be fine, but she's good for the most part. Very rarely are we late anywhere. And she thinks if she's, you know, only five minutes early to work that she's, been late for two hours so uh she's she's pretty punctual all things considered she just is looking for somebody to yell at in the morning occasionally and uh her easy victim is me so yeah cats to ireland.com that's the ringing endorsement for cats to ireland.com all right uh so dy can be a normal human again reveal the shirt that you were excited to show everybody uh my guess was either arizona state or usc i i think i'm going arizona state though it's neither. This one's more Texas for, State. This one's more for you. More for me. Well, Sister Jean. Oh God. I, I, I was right. I, the I ugliest shirt I've ever color. seen. <laughs> I have Sister Jean shirt. Loyola Chicago. That's that's a problem. That's so bad. That is when we, we make that drive to New Orleans for eleven hours, I'm gonna make you stare at that the entire drive. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna let Drew sit in the front seat and I'm I'm gonna bring like uh the peepers that people use in tanning booths and I'm just gonna put them over my I thought, eyes all the time. I thought so I since see. I I specifically said this is for you that you wouldn't like just randomly like it was I thought you knew it wasn't some random school. Right? Yeah, I don't know. I I, you know, Sister Jean's been out of Could my head for a little bit. I've done a really good job of getting her out. Yeah, I knew the color that it was like, you know, it wouldn't be Wichita State, but, uh, you know, yeah, the Wichita State would have been a bad one too. So, well, I'm I'm sad for everybody that had experienced that and DY wearing a Sister Jean shirt today. So, uh, positive thoughts. Let's talk about Avery Johnson, everybody. 
Uh, Avery Johnson will be the quarterback for K-State this season. We talked running backs last week and kind of did a preview there. We also have plenty of different ways to preview the upcoming season over at KSO right now. So if you go to On3 and follow along with the KSO picks that we've been doing, uh, that's a good way to kind of keep getting these little bits of information and content in the buildup to the season, maybe answering some questions or thoughts that you've had sitting at home. But today will be all about the quarterback position. And I'll just start with a question that we asked last year because it's notable just how low the number is for K-State history. So I'll start off strong for both of you. Does Avery Johnson break the single season touchdown passing record of 24, which Will Howard tied last year after I was so confident in saying that he would break it, which by the way, if he had, if he had played the bowl game, he probably would have broken it, but uh, I'm okay with him not playing the bowl game. If he against Texas Tech, he would have broken it too. Great point. That's a great point. Or, so, played, or didn't have to alternate every series against TCU and all these things. Like it's, <laughs> it's one thing after another. <laughs> explosiveness rushing could hurt this right both Avery and Dylan Edwards now that he's on the team although your passing explosiveness probably does take a a leap forward because it was pretty brutal last year I think Kansas State only had one touchdown pass of over 50 yards last year you know who it was to Jaden Jackson DJ Giddens. oh DJ Giddens it would have been Giddens against would have been UCF yeah, yeah, that was the yeah. only yeah. only fifty yard touchdown plus of the season last year. So the passing explosiveness will probably be better. I will say he gets just short of this number. I'm thinking he gets twenty two, twenty three, not twenty four. But what I do think is he gets about eleven to thirteen rushing um, because he had seven last year when he didn't even play yeah. um, half the snaps. So that would put him over Will Howard's total number from last year. I'll say that he does because of central of the, the games played. You got to think that that's in a regular season. That's two a game uh, that like it. And then if you make the conference championship, you play a playoff game, you make a bowl game. That's 14 games. That's a little bit over one passing touchdown per game. I'll say that he does it. I'll be, I'll be the fun one. Yeah, I th I'm, thank you, Drew. Thank you for doing that because I get everything that DY is saying about it. There, so many of these like glamour stats that come with what's going to happen this year for K State football. There's a million ways that it could go. Like, it, there's a there's a world where I does anybody know off the top of their head what DJ Giddens' touchdown total was last season? Uh, like rushing, rush. Yeah, you can do rushing. It was it was eleven or twelve, I believe. Uh, I think it looks like he finished with 10 rushing touchdowns. Maybe yeah, he had, 10. he ended up with 13 overall cause he had three receiving touchdowns. Um, so um, this is where it's interesting. Like there's a world where DJ Gins only scores like five touchdowns this year because they have so many other ways that they're, they could utilize scoring now. It seems like maybe that would be low, but again, he only had the 10 last year. But Dylan Edwards is going to get in. Mm -hmm. Think about this, though. The, Will, the Avery Johnson total touchdown number is what might be more, far more interesting because he, he had seven rushing touchdowns last year on not a lot of snaps. Obviously, five are in the one game against Texas Tech. But Will Howard at nine, like that yeah. was 16 rushing touchdowns from a quarterback last year. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I, I'm incorrect. The uh, DJ Giddens long receiving touchdown came against TCU last year. Uh, I, I thought it was UCF. He did have one, but I guess that ended up being a, a run technically, and uh, it was it was only 36 yards, I think. So uh, I th I th I'm with Drew. I think with the amount of games that you think K-State might play that Avery Johnson does it. And also, I just – you're going to be able to have people so skittish when you get down around the, the, you know, probably the five or 10 yard line that, okay, they're going to use this masterful run game on us. And no doubt K state will at times, but I think they'll have plenty of kind of tricks up their sleeve. And, you know, I, it probably that, that first game of the year against UT Martin, that's what I said last year for, for will was I mean, it's so incredibly out. important to pad stats in that game 
And last year against SEMA, Will only threw two touchdowns in that game. And we know that they're going to, and Avery Johnson also wants to prove that he is a quarterback that can throw the football. And the best way to do it is just go out and repeatedly beat a crappy team in the mouth with it. So uh, I, I once again will predict that a K-State quarterback uh, breaks the single season mark of 24, and I do think Avery Johnson does it this year. Because, I, I mean, there's a world where K-State's offense is better this season than it was last year. Uh, we'll just see how it ultimately ends up playing out. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't get there. I think counting touchdowns is a very, very tricky uh, thing to do. But my next question ties into what D.Y. already brought up. If you had to give me a number on total touchdowns for every Johnson this year, what would that number be? I will say that number will be 34, beating Will Howard's number of last year of 33. I'll go like 36, because I, I think that he can get 25, 26 through the air, and then just double-digit rushing touchdowns isn't crazy. I mean, we talked about that uh, last week, Mason, that we think that or on Sunday that Avery Johnson could be second on the team in rushing touchdowns. Yeah. No, there's there's certainly a world where that's the case. I mean, I, I'd i go back and I would compare it to 2022. Like, the pace that Adrian Martinez was on, you know, we, we know that he ended up getting hurt in that game against TCU very early, you know, then his playing time was minimal the rest of the way. Adrian Martinez finished the, the 2022 season with 10 rushing touchdowns and six through the air. So he was at 16, and he really only played in, I guess what we would categorize that as seven games, basically. Um, I, I think that there's a world out there where we're talking like, it, again, it, it comes back to I was about to be really confident with what I said, and then you think you have DJ Gins and Dylan Edwards on your roster. Like, those guys are going to score the football. And it's not just you're going to give those guys the ball in, like, scoring position. Those guys are so good that you're going to have, theoretically, more of those explosive plays this year. So you're sitting at the 45, and, oh, there you got six points. So less Less goal line situations, and you also have to think – if you're at the goal line, does it make sense to give Avery a potential hit there or just give it to Dylan and DJ again? Uh, do you want to give him a hit and the Heisman or no hit, no Heisman? <laughs> what you take your pick, DY. Uh I will I will say so thinking about the pace that like Adrian Martinez would have been on and everything else that was going there. I think that I I think Avery can get to 37. I'll say 37 30. this year will be my guess. I'll say 34. It's 22 and 12. I'll I'll lock in 36 at 25 and 11. Okay. I guess you guys have given specifics. Uh, well, I will go with, I guess I'll go 28 and 9. I think he'll throw for 28. Shatter that. I love it. Shatter. <laughs> Yes, I think that the passing will be a little bit more surprising than what people think. We'll see. And what's going to be hard moving forward, I know it's part of the difficulty uh -oh. of this question, okay. and purposeful here, is that number of games. You have to also project how many games this team will play. Yeah, because I mean, we'll, it can we'll vary much. And this team's probably playing 16 games this year. No, he's <laughs> playing 17. I thought right? I thought DUI was about to start saying, "Well, you know, already preparing for when it happens." And Drew and I are right. And he goes, "Well, those jet sweeps are kind of runs. So should they really count as passing touchdowns for Avery?" Uh, I was just ready for for that. I mean, well, no, that counts. It does but count. That, that, that that, 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 that's the man that is always anti that. <laughs> Well, you know, that's just smart football, you know. Don't, don't make it a fumble. Make it an incomplete pass. Uh, this kind of ties into what we've talked about here. But num my third question for you guys, does Avery have at least 100 rushing attempts this season? So I'll give you some, some context to this. Uh, last year, uh, you ended up getting 81 uh, combined attempts because I believe I went through and I combined the numbers between 
nope. uh, Will Will and Avery and how it went. Will at Will at eighty one. Okay, so Will had eighty one. So I just gave. I went with Avery. His. Avery at fifty two. Uh, Adrian had a hundred eleven in twenty twenty two, which is insane. And then some more of the full season stuff. You ended up with. 47 for Skylar Thompson in 21, 78 for Will in 2020, which is crazy. And, uh, you know, a shorter year, and Will only played eight games for K State. Uh, 114 for Skylar in 2019. And then the two quarterbacks combined for 190 in 2018, which was, you know, a stinky year and everything. And combined for 133 last year. Yeah. So, do you think it hits 100 this year? Yes or no? I think you have a number of design passes that will end up as scrambles. I think you can expect a few of those, maybe 20, uh, as many as 20. You're st still going to get, I would say, five to seven design runs a game as well. Yeah, I think it goes over 100 because I, I do think they'll – They'll want to protect them, and then we're going to get into the middle of the season. They're playing like Oklahoma State or KU, and it's like, You'll need guess it. what? We're going to win this game if you run the ball. Yeah, I think that it gets over 100 uh, scrambles, designed runs. We, we didn't talk that sacks also count, so like yeah. you have to account for at least a handful of those uh, being sacks. So, Although Avery only took one sack last year. Hard to sack a fast. Yeah, game. I don't know. How, I was about to say that it, I don't know how sustainable one sack is. But well, you know, it'll be more than you, one sack. <laughs> you got to take into account. Uh, but I, I think now, I now you're the hard. Debbie Downer. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I will be different than you guys on this one. I will say under. Uh, I think that they will be very selective about when. They run him. When they do, I think it'll pop off for big yardage. Uh, and there will be those plays where, you know, it's supposed to be a pass and he makes something happen, like what we saw in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. But in that game, you know, he only ran the ball seven times. Um, and you think about how that would end up working out and, and how you kind of replicate that. There will also be certain games where maybe that number is incredibly low. Like you think about, UT Martin, how much, how many rushing attempts does he have in the season opener? That number could be low. Later in the year at Houston, you would think that that would be a game where, hey, you're probably not needing it and, and saving it a little bit. Um, and there will be the games like last year we saw. I mean, he, he had uh, 13 attempts against Texas Tech. He had 16 against TCU. You're not going to, to nerf one of his best abilities just because you want to also showcase that he's a great quarterback that can throw the ball. Um, but I don't know. I, I think that there's a world where, uh, he doesn't get to a hundred. I mean, it would be very close. It'll be a razor thin margin. Um, but they won't need him to run it as much as maybe could be dictated. And I think that they'll be smart about when they do, you can be far more selective based on the talent you have right now, uh, than what, you know, you've had in certain years where you had to run the quarterback to have success in some ways. And if he has under 100, he probably is definitely going to have more yards per carry than he had last year, which was still pretty good at almost 5.7 yards per carry. Yeah. But the leader in yards per carry last year was at 30 yards per carry off of one carry. You guys know what that was? Uh, one, yeah. one carry, 30 yards. Jaden Jackson. No. Mm -hmm. uh, who would that have been? <laughs> I'm trying to go through and uh not a typical guy that would have the ball in his hands. Um this is bad podcasting. I'm just gonna say it. Jack Bloomer. Oh, great, oh. great. That's a great one. Yeah. Uh yeah. would not have I was just thinking who, who led had, the team who with led the year. team in 30 yards per carry last year. No, that's that's like me telling people that I'm the all-time three-point percentage leader at Pearl Hills Middle School. And after that, it was nine yards per carry, which was Jaden Jackson, pretty good. So, um, and there given, was giving Bloomer the ball more. Yeah, yeah. should have. Okay, and the, the worst on the team was Joe Jackson. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have a the sad note by Dy there, just saying Joe Jackson wasn't good last year in his minimal time on the field. Uh, let's get even sadder here. Does Avery play every meaningful snap 
of the season. So not, you know, they they go no. with some crazy play. So he's he's You'll not out for that. There's pop no a pop a helmet off. That I will throw that one out as well. I'm not no. gonna that that yeah no that's that's the technique. <laughs> I'm trying to lay out for you right here all the different things that exclude that. So yes, uh, popping a helmet off does not count you know, a trick play or something, or it's a blowout. So they take him off the field, but meaningful snaps, close game. You're trying to win. Basically he doesn't miss any time for an injury, whether that's a long-term injury or a, Hey, he's got to miss a series here. Well, I feel like no. there's one, there's one answer and it's, it's yes. Cause I'm not going to project that he gets hurt. I'm not going to be that one. I will say no because there's what one or two quarterbacks in, in the entire league per year at most that play every, every meaningful snap. How many quarterbacks played every, every? How many starting quarterbacks played every meaningful snap in a Big Twelve last year? Uh, <laughs> let's see what that number would have ended up being. Um, every meaningful snap. I mean, like they didn't lose like a quarter for a game either. Like I, it might no, be zero. A little bit tougher. Does Will Howard count in this scenario for getting benched? No, those, those don't. Cause I mean, technically no, like Oklahoma he, state didn't, but, but no, because he didn't play every meaningful snap against TCU because he had to share it. Well, yeah. and tech, yeah, yeah, that's, he, he, he would, he would not yeah. count for this. The, the timeshare guys don't count, even though you would, like, I think Garrett Green was banged up at least a little bit last year. No, maybe. Um, he was certainly the year before. We know Texas Tech. They've not done this probably since, like, JFK was president. Um, <laughs> Wait, I'm going no because the odds say the answer is going to be. Uh, actually, was Cincinnati one of the teams to do it? Because even though the Emory Jones was bad, like, I don't know. that <laughs> Did he have to miss any time at any point? I don't think uh, Rocco Bett missed time, actually. Yeah, I think I think Emory Jones played every meaningful snap for Cincinnati last year. You're right about Rocco Becht. That's probably a good one. So Iowa State got through it. Um, did Donovan Smith last year have to uh, do anything? Doesn't look like it. He he had almost 400 pass attempts, and uh, then his backup had only eight. So I would guess that yeah, he played almost Iowa time. State's backup only had 11. BYU had a split quarterback because they didn't know which one to go with. Same yeah. with Oklahoma State. Same I mean, with- we're we're still looking. The 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 last time K State didn't have to use a backup quarterback was 2019. Baylor, I, they had to move. move. Yeah. It highlights that this yeah. is a rare thing, more rare than people would think. Um, and obviously, why K State went out and they they added another you know experienced quarterback to their room to make sure they had depth behind Avery Johnson, but. Avery Johnson has shown that he can avoid the contact. He knows when to throw the ball away. He's going to have protection because of how good the run game is going to be for him. And I think that in some ways you're just due for some luck to, to go your way. Uh, and I say that Avery Johnson does play every meaningful snap for K-State this year. By the way, I think Nico Marchial did have some meaningful snaps at some point for West Virginia. Okay. I mean, he – he played in nine different games, so that seems like he probably did. And UCF had Timmy McLean and yeah, um, what, what West Virginia Plumlee. didn't have nine blowout wins last year. <laughs> so sure? and then he had Plumley and oh. McLean at UCF. He had all the quarterbacks at Tech. Uh, Ewers got hurt. TCU had Chandler Morris and Josh Hoover. Oklahoma State couldn't decide which one they wanted through the first three or mm-hmm. four games. Jackson Arnold came in for Oklahoma definitely at some point. K State. Definitely KU, definitely BYU, definitely Baylor, definitely. So the only three I think to be unscathed last year were the three we actually mentioned: Cincinnati, Houston, and Iowa State. You know, you think about it. Everybody credits Matt Campbell for Iowa State becoming this sustaining competitor in the Big Twelve. Somebody should check into what their team doctors are doing. That they were like the only team to stay fully healthy through COVID in 2020, and now they're just like. Yeah, you know our, our quarterbacks—they never—they never get hurt. We never need to use somebody else. Uh, I demand an investigation. On I will say, if you exclude the pandemic season, and this is a stat that Cole Manbeck from the Three Mall Podcast with me came up with: one score games since 2019, excluding the pandemic season. Matt Campbell is five and 18. Mm. Mm. 
Get a little Scott Frosty in here, huh? Yeah. I I, I kind of thought that you were going to give a backup quarterback stack. Because we talked about this before. We've gone through and tried to determine, you know, who how many times you have to go to that guy, and you have to do it a lot. But I, I just think, like I said, I, Avery Johnson knows how to kind of get out of the way, uh, avoid the, the serious contact, and it also just helps to – be in a position where it, it might be time to, to kind of luck out. Uh, next question for you guys. Where does Avery rank amongst passing yards for Big 12 quarterbacks this season? So you don't have to give me necessarily a number, but in your head, can you try and guess where, if you rank them all out, where he ends up sitting in the Big 12? Uh, I know that can be a little bit of a, a tricky question, but I figured I would throw it your way and see kind of what you were thinking. Because last year, I mean – Will Howard finished sixth. He was behind Gabriel, Ewers, Bowman, Beck, and Smith. Uh, two of those teams are no longer in this league, uh, and we'll see how it ends up working out. I'm going to guess that Iowa State can't be that explosive again because I think their explosiveness helped them, so I'll say no to that one. I will say, say Donovan Smith can probably get more just because I think they might just sling it around, right, a little bit. Yeah. Or, and they're going to be losing a lot, so they're going to have to throw a lot. So I, I would say Houston gets more. I would say Cincinnati gets more but because they're going to be trailing a lot too, but I just don't know if they're good enough to do that. <laughs> Same with BYU. Baylor, I think they'll run Daquan Finn quite a bit. Yeah. So the only one I'm really confident in there is Houston. KU, you got the quarterback situation there. It makes things tricky. I'll say they can probably throw for more. Um, Houston, KU, Arizona. Yeah, Arizona's going. Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. So that, that's fifth at best then you're getting to. Utah is probably going to be pretty balanced and probably looks similar to K-State. Yeah. I don't think Alan Bowman throws for more. They get Ollie Gordon that they'll lean on. For TCU will swing it. For reference, Shadur Sanders would have had the second most attempts passing last year in the Big 12. You guys know who was number one in the Big 12 last year? Threw the ball 501 times. That's over 100 more than the next closest quarterback in the Big 12 last year. Gabriel? Nope. New team? Nope. This this was a team that was in the Big 12 last year. And threw 500 times. Is the quarterback still in the league? Yes, he is. So this would be, is it Donovan Smith? Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, Donovan Smith was number two, 397 attempts last year. 500. Is it Josh Hoover? <laughs> no, he yeah. has more time with Chiller Morris. but uh. <laughs> Not Josh Hoover, no. Because uh, he would have probably thrown about 300 picks if he threw the ball 500 times last year. Man, maybe it's Garrett Green. I don't know. It is not Garrett Green. Is it, it is Alan Bowman. Is it Rocco? Uh, Alan Bowman? Bowman. How, Alan how? Bowman threw the ball 501 times last year. How? When you have Ollie Gordon and he didn't even start the first few games. It's an insane number. His completion percentage was under 61%, and he averaged 6.9 yards per attempt, uh, which ends up being worse than a lot of other guys that would have been towards the top because his 6.9 would have had him tied with Emory Jones uh, out of guys that played a majority of the season. Um, it was slightly above Baron Morton and Keaton Slovis uh, last season, but he was one of the worst in terms of yards per attempt last year. But a lot of uh, there's a lot of you know short passes and screens, which we talked about last year about Oklahoma State, where they were there was just so much of like dumping down. And he also had 14 picks last se season, which uh, was the most in the Big 12. So. Anyway, so yeah, so I'll say definitely should do her. Sanders of Colorado, Noah Fafita for Arizona. I think because they'll throw it a lot, Josh Hoover for TCU might have more yards as well. Um, And then I'll go to, I'll say Jalen Daniel stays healthy. Kansas throws for more. Rocker throws for less, I think. Donovan Smith throws for more. And that's it. I'll say, I'll say he gets sixth again. Seems, yeah, I was, seems I was thinking fair. six or seven. Like you got to take into account to the the run game that K State will have and want to run run the ball and See, that's why I stayed away from UCF too because they're gonna I think yeah. UCF gonna run the crap out of the ball. Yeah. They have two running backs and KJ Jefferson. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And you'd, and you'd also think that like K State will probably be winning most of the game, so 
I, that kind of takes away passing yards too. But uh, I'll, I'll say sixth or seventh. Well, and I, I think the passing game, I think both facets are going to be very selective for K-State this year. I don't think they have to, they're going to have those stretches where they have to go real heavy with one way or the other. They can choose what they want to do. And like the running situation is going to give them the opportunity for, we don't need to throw the ball 35 times in the game to, you know, score with the pass, but we can have a very selective point in time where we know, hey, right now, right now we're going to, we're going to launch it. We're going to get 40 yards out of this. Like, I think the explosive plays are going to come back and you won't need as many of them through the air. And that, that will bring down uh, the opportunity for yardage. I, I think, I think, but if, you, but if you stay healthy, you almost get in the top six or seven by default because I went through all these teams yeah. just not long ago. And there was like eight teams, or no, maybe that's a little too much. There's like six or six teams last year that had two quarterbacks with over 200 attempts. And yeah. when you split like that, then you're not going to get the yards. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, where I, I fall on this one, I, Colorado will end up higher up there with Shadur Sanders. Arizona with Noah Fafita, like that's the thing. Like Fafita is a year older and he was young last year. So he'll be in that same position. Um, you, you think Oklahoma State is probably, if they threw it that much last year, they'll have to throw it even more this year. Um, and if you're letting Alan Bowman throw the ball that many times, like you just want, you just want to chuck it around the yard, you know? Um, I'll, I'll throw us now. This is where you start to say, is health going to come in? I think Donovan Smith is still up there because he's just kind of a gunner back there. Um, I will Schreiber. go, I will go fifth for, for Avery Johnson in the passing yards department, though, behind those guys. You're right. Hoover might put it in the air a lot, but like, does there come a time of the year where, like, if things start to go south for TCU this year, like Sonny Dykes has to start to think about, he probably doesn't get fired after this year, but true. And like, then you might have to make a move. And then you're, you're also thinking health concerns with does Jalen Daniels make it through an entire season? Does Baron Morton at Texas tech make it through? Cause I think Texas tech is going to throw the ball more yeah. this year, even though they have Taj Brooks, they've got good weapons at receiver, yeah, but, but injuries at quarterback. Yeah. And then for BYU, Jerry Bohannon runs the ball a lot. And, is he gonna? He he's a candidate to not be starting by yeah. week seven. You know, Quan Finn and Baylor will probably run the ball a bit. Yeah. KJ Jefferson at UCF will probably run the ball a bit. Garrett Green at West Virginia will run the he's ball. He's a runner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Soresby is probably maybe a dark horse to have more than Avery, but that also depends on him keeping the job. Yeah. Yeah. That, some of these teams you just can't project. Uh, you have to factor in injury for some others. You got to be. Are you going to be good enough to to kind of keep it together, or are you going uh, to be bad enough to throw it a lot? <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll see how that ends up going. All right, final question: previewing the quarterback position for K State today. What awards and honors does Avery Johnson receive in his first season as a starter? So, uh, whatever you think he might get, whether that's you know an All Big Twelve team, is he good enough to do something more than that, or get other notoriety elsewhere? Uh, what honors do you think he ends up with at the end of this season? Is he considered like a newcomer? Probably not because he played enough games Probably last year. Not. Yeah. So I will say at this is not going to be a fun take. I'll say honorable mention. Mm. Because I just, I'd like if, if these guys that I'm about to say. That's okay. Just, we know you're a hater. If these guys that I'm about to bring up are even just solid and play, like at least 10 or 11 games in the regular season, Noah Fafita, Shadur Sanders, Jalen Daniels, they're going to get the notoriety, I think. Uh, I'll say an all Big 12 team, maybe second. Like, I just think that if K State has the season that we kind of expect, that you would think that the quarterback of the best, one of the best teams would kind of get that, that nod over the others. Yeah. I mean, I, I just I think he's going to be really good this year, and I think that I think the All Big Twelve team, like I feel comfortable saying that he's a lock for that. I know there's a lot of teams, a lot of good quarterbacks, uh, but I think he'll get one of those spots, especially if K State ends up in Arlington, like would be projected. Um, I'll take it back. I, I, I get mean, second team. I'll take it back second. Okay. Team. All right. There we go. There we go. Because uh, I do have Kansas State going to Arlington, not winning. Yeah. <laughs> and I do have Arizona kind of struggling. So maybe that takes Fafita out of the mix. I think Shador can still get on it without being good. Well, yeah. I would hope that the Big 12 is smarter than that. But that uh, happened last year. So, 
And is there another quarterback? Like if, if I have, like I have Oklahoma state winning the big 12, but I don't think Alan Bowman, Alan Bowman will not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's not significant yeah. to that. Yeah. And the, so the second place team, which I have K state, you would think would have one of the two top quarterbacks. Right. So I'll yeah. say second team. And then first team, I'll still say it's probably Shadur if he's solid. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I, I think I think that he he makes one of the teams. Uh if I mean if if I had to go one way, I just keep going back to if the season goes according to plan for K State, it's going to be due in large part to Avery Johnson just looks incredible. And how do you have somebody that plays that well, that has those talents, and then not give him the first team honors and get he gets the the most votes there? Uh, so I, I still think Avery Johnson's the first team quarterback at the end. Of the and, year. There, and there's also Cam Rising. Yeah. Yeah. It, it honestly, it probably comes down to which of those two guys had the better regular season out of their two teams, uh, even if the the margin's pretty small. But at the end of the day, like I, Avery's going to have a little bit more of that true playmaker to him because of his legs are better than Cam Rising's legs, but. It'll be close. It'll be uh it'll be a debate all those season. Legs, long. Hey, those legs are old, but they still go, Cam Rising. It's true. That's true. But we'll see how it goes. Uh I'll throw this one in. A little fun question for you. Who is the first backup quarterback to see the field this year? Whether it's garbage time against UT Martin or heaven forbid something happens to Avery Johnson. Who is the first backup quarterback to see action? Roberson. Roberson. Okay, well, just to be different, I'm going to go with Jacob Knuth. So, Mason and I also I also think that if it, that if it if it comes in in mop up time against UT Martin, there's a chance you just go with the guy that's been here longer. It's it's insignificant. You give him the first backup series, then you can go Roberson, and then you can figure out what you want to do with him after that point, but I'll go Knuth. So you're I'll, trying to get it the, the cheap, the cheap way is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. This is like uh pick six on power cat game day when somebody's needed to make up ground and you're like, well, by golly, I guess I got to take Baylor to beat Utah this weekend. I know it's not going to happen, but I got to get points somewhere. Uh, so that's where I sit. We'll see how it ends up working out. And we are 11 days away from that game taking place between K state and UT Martin where we will be there excited for the season opener and everything to come after it. And a reminder to head over to On3 and become a member of K-State Online right now if you're not, because you get great stories and news in the lead up to the season. Also, you can be a part of our premium message board where you're going to get great nuggets from DY and uh, plenty of Will Howard threads if you want those. I know DY is just in love with, it's like a daily Will update uh on there which is good because he likes to keep up with his buckeyes that's his quarterback uh this year so uh yeah the, the, today is the will howard potato chips yeah oh yeah i, I mean seen those are you gonna are you gonna buy some uh probably not i i don't know if i'll as like a gag gift buy them for somebody else but uh yeah i'll i'll probably figure something out there somebody will end up with them it won't be me but uh, i'll get them to somebody so yeah there you have it. That will do it for us today. We will be back again tomorrow. More previewing K-State throughout this whole process. We also will have a recruiting update later in the week with Drew because the man never stopped with his recruiting coverage. So that's another benefit to being a member of K-State Online. You're going to get all of the recruiting updates from Drew, uh, especially with you know some guys making decisions about when they're going to take visits this year for game days and everything in between. Also, we'll have an extensive schedule where the three of us will be out throughout the season uh, getting some insight and uh, sights from the uh, high school recruits that K-State's looking at in the area. So that will do it for us today. For Drew Galloway, Derek Young, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching and listening to the KSO Show. Back again tomorrow to talk more cats.